Welcome back to One on One with UFC middleweight champion Anderson the Spider Silva. Now, Anderson, in November 2006, you joined a new team called Black House with the Noguera brothers, Lyoto Machida, and Vidor Belfort, amongst other great mixed martial arts names. Uh, talk about the experience of being with Black House and especially getting your Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt with Minotoro. Uh, eu acho que foi uma experiência muito boa, Black House. I believe the experience of, uma, of you know forming Black House was an idea of, of one of my managers, uh, George Guimarães, who, who basically had this idea of putting this uh, training facility together and having boa. all of us train é. together. It was a great experience. I mean, anytime you're able to be in a room with the, the Noguera brothers, uh, Vitor Belfort, uh, Lyoto Machida, uh, it's always a, a great experience. Uh, and, uh, and nowadays, you know, uh, you know, I still train a lot, and I've been friends and and train quite often with the Noguera brothers, with Vitor Belford, we, we, we just train in different places, we, we hardly, you know, we don't have too much communication with one another, but, you know, it was a great experience uh, joining the Black House, uh, you know, team and, and, and doing all that, and um, as far as getting my black belt, it was, uh, you know, it was an honor to get my black belt from the Noguera brothers, I was actually a little bit surprised at first, but at the end of the day, if the Noguera brothers are giving you a black belt, it's pretty obvious that you deserve it. Now let's talk about your move to the UFC. Obviously you made your uh, debut a very memorable one. You took out Chris Lieben in just 49 seconds. Uh, he was well known from the Ultimate Fighter reality show. Did you think your debut was going to be that easy? In my UFC debut I trained very very hard uh, for that fight. Also because it was my debut I wanted to make an impression. And, um, you know, basically what we focused and trained on was to capitalize off of Chris Lieben's airs. And uh, when I went in there, I, I, I was a little bit awkward stepping into the octagon for the first time. And even though the fight looked like it was easy and looked like it went quick, for me, it, it wasn't an easy fight. Um, and it also didn't seem like it went that quick. I, I mean, I felt like it took me a little bit to, to get in there and really feel w what I was trying to do. It took to get, get my stride. It was a little bit weird being in the octagon for the first time and being in such a big octagon. But uh, thank God everything worked out well. And, you know, you got to take your hat off to Chris Levin because he's been able to show in his past performances that uh, he is a tough guy and, and, and he puts up a good fight. And he's a, he's a hell of a fighter. But it was a great experience overall. Well, you definitely made an impression. And, and prior to your Octagon debut, you were known amongst the hardcore fans. Obviously, Brazil, you fought for Cage Rage in England, your Japanese experience. Not very many people in North America knew who you were before the fight. But after the fight, there was a survey done by the UFC online to see who they would want to uh, have you fight next. And everyone wanted you to fight Rich Franklin, the middleweight champion. That must have made you feel really good. It was an honor to fight Rich Franklin. Rich Franklin, um, I, you know, I, I, I like him a lot as a person. Um, he's a he's a good person, and um, you know, w when we went in there to to, to fight, it, it, it was an experience that, uh, man, I I can't explain. I, I I you know I I hold him very close to my heart. I respect him a lot. I I still feel that uh, you know the two best fighters in that weight category in the UFC are myself and Rich Franklin. He's a great fighter, um, and uh, you know I, I appreciate the opportunity he gave me, and um, and that's why I gave it back to him later. It's interesting because the fight took place in October 2006, UFC 64. Lyoto Machida, one of your uh, training partners, was the first and only man to beat Franklin prior to that fight. Did he give you any tips? Because really, I know how close you are to Rich, but it was a massacre. <laughs> Yeah, Lyoto uh, definitely gave me some tips on how to fight with him. We, tr we trained uh, a little bit together for that fight, and his advice definitely helped. Would you care to share some of that advice, or do you want to keep it a secret? Yeah, I mean, we spoke about a lot of things. He just basically told me that Rich Franklin is a tough fighter. He's got heavy hands, and uh, and we just basically trained some specific movements and, and, and some things that uh, he thought might help me through the fight. Well, whatever it was, it obviously helped. Uh, an absolutely dominating performance. And at the time of this interview, you have successfully defended the title six more times, including unifying the Pride and UFC 185-pound belts with Dan Henry. Anderson, you're coming off a fight against Patrick Cote in which you received some criticism about your performance. Uh, people saying it was a, not an Anderson Silva type fight where you wanted to avoid contact. Uh, how do you respond to these critics? 
I, the way I look at it is, you know, whoever has a mouth can say what they want. You know, the fight against Patrick Cote, I, I actually believe that it was going as planned. Um, you know, we were, you know, we respect Patrick Cote. He's got heavy hands. We were expecting to take him into a little bit of deeper water in the later rounds. In the second round, I know that I got him really good with a kick on his knee. And, um, and unfortunately, in the third round, his, his knee got dislocated. But I felt that the fight was going as planned. It was unfortunate that his knee um, got dislocated and, or popped out. Um, it was a shame, but I felt that the fight was kind of turning out the way we were planning it for it to turn out. Um, but, you know, it's back to the drawing board. Um, you know, I'm training really hard and, you know, I've got to stay well trained because, uh, you know, I want to fight against the best and I want to be well prepared to fight uh, whoever wants to challenge me. Do you think Patrick Cote deserves a rematch in light of how the fight ended and how it was going until then? Obviously, he's saying that the fight was going well for him and that that he was on his way to beating you. Now, I don't know if that's just his way to remain in the mix, but would you like to fight Patrick Cote again? The way I feel is, is that Patrick Cote had his opportunity to take nothing away from him. But, you know, if he has to kind of get to the back of the line and, and, and start winning some fights and, and win a couple fights, and, and if he gets that opportunity and I'm still the champ uh, when he gets that opportunity, then it'll be an honor. It'll be a great honor to fight him again. In July of 2008, you moved up to 205 pounds for the first time against James Irvin. You uh, dispatched him in just over a minute. Is that a weight class you want to compete in more often? Yes, I, I really did enjoy the experience of moving up in weight and fighting in the 205-pound division. I feel that there's a lot of valid opponents, well, a lot of guys who have great striking and great complete games in the 205-pound division. But my goal and my, uh, my focus is definitely to defend my 185-pound middleweight title. But I'd also like the experience of going up and fighting um, in the 205-pound weight category because I think I want to fight against the best. So whether it be at 185 pounds or 205 pounds I want to put on the fights that the world wants to see all right well who do you think deserves the next title shot uh, I'm not too sure that's a good question what about uh, a matchup with Chuck Liddell at 205 pounds would you like to see that happen in 2009 uh, who knows if I'll, I'll fight Chuck Liddell? I, I have, I have a, a lot of respect for Chuck Liddell. I really uh, admire his story and he, the history that he's created for the UFC. And I don't even know if I'm, I'm, I deserve a, a chance to fight Chuck Liddell. If the opportunity came up, I would love. It would be a great honor to fight him. It would be a great honor to, to, to see what it would be like to, to, to match up against him in, in the octagon. But, you know, I'm not the person to make that choice. If, if that's who the UFC and the world, the fight that the world wants to see, then uh, it would be a great honor to step into the octagon against a guy like Chuck Liddell. I know you're very humble, but I think all fight fans agree that you more than deserve a shot at the Iceman. I feel that, um, you know, if, if the world wants to see that fight, what, what a great honor it would be. But e even with that being said, you know, who knows if it will happen. I feel that Chuck ha has a lot of experience, a lot more experience with big fights. He's a great big name and he's a very technical, more technical than I am, I feel, in certain aspects. UFC President Dana White has indicated that there is a chance that if George St. Pierre defends the welterweight title against BJ Penn at the end of January of 2009, that a super fight will be made between GSP and yourself. If it is signed, how do you think you match up with, with the French Canadian? The way I look at it is everybody has their set of problems. I feel that I have my problems. Uh, up to 185 pounds. I feel people that fight at the 205 category have their problems and George St. Pierre has his problems up to 170 pounds. Right now the way I look at it is, is that you know uh, Lyoto Machida has got his work cut out for him at the 205 pound division. I've got my work cut out for me at 185 pound division and, and, uh, and George St. Pierre has got his smaller problems to deal with in the 170 pound division division. <laughs> you have indicated an interest in boxing, especially against Roy Jones Jr. Now, Dana White has said, as long as you're under UFC contract, he will not allow that. Has that put any strain on your relationship with Dana? 